Hey artists, uh, I wanted to just go back on the PowerPoint we were doing earlier on. Um, I should have recorded it at the time, but I didn't, so uh, I'll record it now so you can have a look at it. So this is a PowerPoint of um, just uh, some current yeah, work I'm doing in Sketchbook. And what we were talking about is the design process, or you know, sometimes called the design cycle. What we want you to think about is, is ways to use a sketchbook to generate ideas. So looking back, um, what I was talking about was the, the Loomis method, obviously. Um, and these are the heads that we looked at a couple of weeks ago. <coughs> of course, I asked you to look at the classical images, which I attached at the bottom of the video. Um, but I'm not going to ask you to do that and not be prepared to do it myself. So I did the exercise. So I really enjoyed this exercise actually and I, you know, I feel like I learned quite a lot from it. Uh, and the more I learn and look at the Loomis method, the more I understand it actually. So so we you know we can see the inner circle uh, with the side plane of the head and halfway up tells us where the brow is and the top is the hairline. Bottom of the circle is the nose and then one more same distance down is where the jaw is. This is just a beautiful process. You know. uh, and you know, I won't show you all of these because because there's about ten of these classical heads. But um, well, this is just kind of you know, demonstrating where I started off. So, so this is a, a general sketchbook which I use for uh, you know for just all kinds of recording and playing and and you know uh, responding to exercises. And uh, I was I was interested in this head because it was it was like a um, just because it was looking upwards and uh, the challenge of modeling the lips and those types of things looking upwards. Um, and then I started to add ink in because I needed to understand it more. And uh, you know, thinking about these kind of half tone inks, I could consider the planes of the face and where light was striking them. You know, which you know these are revealed by the way light strikes strikes things. So, so um, you know, your classical images are amazing images to work from. So, so you can't really go wrong. You know, if you if you haven't done this exercise yet, I still say go back and have a go at it. It's a way of discovering, yeah. Uh, so this is one of the harder ones because the head was tilted back, but um, it's worth having a go at, you know. And, um, you know, uh, Safe Harbor never made good sail, I did it. So, um, so you, you can see my sketchbook is a little bit cluttered. That's the edge of a life drawing of Eve there. And this, this is a you know, post postcard responding to the government strategy about artists having to retrain or something else. So moving on to another sketchbook, and I, I have sketchbooks that have different functions. You know, um, so this this one is is focused, and it's it's about printmaking. You know, um, and you know, and I'm interested in these processes as a printmaker. So, so thinking about the design cycle, one one of the most important stages actually is experimental play, and um, so you know I've, I've recorded these textures and. Uh, the side of the yellow is it's got shellac over it, which is a varnish. Um, and I've got shiny paper, glue, scrunched up tin foil, uh, carborundum. And I'm trying to list a kind of, um, you know, what they look like when I've printed them. So I've inked them up and put them through the press. And that's the, the you know, the plate and the print next to each other. And labeling them, you know, I'm actually keeping a list of, of what the results are. You don't have to be this precise, but um, but but I I actually I really value this process. So you know so uh, you know, it's experimental play is 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 a is a, a driving force behind my my work. So, so this is an, another page of the same process, and it's a PVA with a flea comb through it, and it prints it. You know, kind of slightly different tonal value where it's got the shellac over it, where the other. So I'm, I'm learning as I'm doing this, you know. And what I'm getting is there's different tones. And I've got a list then of how I achieved it. So this is uh, this is crackle glaze, four different treatments of it, and then printed. And, I, and I'm using annotation to describe what I'm doing. Um, and here I've got, like, number one here, I'm, I'm thinking about what does it remind me of. It reminds me of, of uh, rock. Um, I've got le uh, reptile skin there, and 
I'm thinking that you know, like maybe a map of fields viewed from above, so from an aeroplane or that type of thing. And and each of these different treatments have tried to do the same, tried to think about what it reminds me of. The reason I'm noting these down is because in the future, if I wanted to represent one of those things, um, I've started to build a dictionary of visual effects that you know that that that, that you know that tell me basically that's how you do that. And we, we've done this by play. Yeah. It's 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 you know it's it's why kids play because we're learning how to be in the real world. So, so this is um, Eva Jusola, who's an artist I follow on Instagram, uh, and it's really good to have artist references in your sketchbooks because, um, you know, the artists were interested in why we like them. Yeah. Uh, this artist I'm, I, I wrote as a thank her because she's very generous with the process and. Um, this is one of her prints, but she's beautiful and subtle. And um, this is the plate. And what she's done, she's labelled how she achieved each one. Um, so we've got, you know, PVA, carver under cut out mount board. Um, and she's drawn on with wax crayon at the bottom to get the most subtle effects. Um, I think that's really generous because for an artist to show out exactly how she does something, you know, um, she's not getting paid to do that, you know, so. Uh, and a lot of artists are very secretive, and yeah, you know, the, 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 I've learned how to do this for twenty years, and I'm not telling anyone how to do it, which, which is, is really, it seems childish to me, you know. Um, so looking back, we, we went on this um, Dale Twatter's pool of drawing during lockdown, uh, which was wonderful, uh, an experience of being outdoors. <laughs> so this is a, a drawing uh, across the Mersey that you know from that day, and. Um, it's my turn now, you know, so the next thing I need to do is build a plate based on how Eva just has done it. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the sketchbook is only part way in progress, so so I haven't actually done that yet. So it's quite recent work, you know. Uh, a similar process is, you know, looking at this source material, so it's, it's not, you know, artist, it was carved by an artist, but we don't know the artist's name. Um, these are uh, two Roman images of a uh, uh, the genii Cucalati, with these uh, three hooded gods. Um, uh, uh, the Romans took from the Celts, actually. So, uh, and the the word that this thing called the Via Britannicus, which is basically a duffel coat, uh, and the Romans laughed at them when they arrived uh, because they were used to togas and armour, uh, and the, you know. Apparently, within a couple of weeks of, of being in British weather, they were they were pleading for people to to, to actually make them a Via Britannicus to wear themselves. Yeah. So we got these th three hooded fertility gods wearing wearing the Via Britannicus, and then I made a drawing to simplify that down. And this is a an image of the final print. So I, I drew this out, covered it in glue, uh, and I sprinkled um, stuff called carbon on them, which is like a powdered fine grit over it which obviously sticks to the glue and holds the ink. So it gives them almost like a stonework effect, yeah. Um, and if you subtly go in and you can see that the, the combing effects from the flea comb from the first set of samples, which also go with this, uh, give almost like a kind of fabric weave effect. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a, a page of ideas, uh, drawings of, of, uh, uh, from these kind of photographs of crows that got printed off. Um, a thing called the Rainbow Crow, which is a, a Native American uh, mythic image. Um, so they, they had the crow as this beautiful songbird with rainbow feathers, uh, with a, with a, it volunteers to, to to fly up to heaven to to bring fire back, um, like Prometheus, because people are cold in the winter. Um, and on its its three day flight back, it, you know the, the the soot blackens all its feathers, and um, and the, the smoke turns its beautiful song to a croak. So it's very kind of heroic uh, beast, um, and it, you know it's it just struck me as a beautiful image that it, you know that's yet to come. So so this is current work, and I don't know whether anyone's seen the um, the Last Temptation of Christ, the, the Willem Dafoe film. Um, there's a sequence in it where Lazarus is raised from the dead, um, and it, it's it's actually really terrifying. Um, you know, Jesus is mortified that his, his friend has died and he's he's heartbroken. He approaches the grave and calls into the darkness, uh, and there's just no response. It's silent. Yeah. Uh, and finally, this hand comes out of the darkness, wrapped, uh, 
takes hold of Jesus' hand, and as Jesus pulls, um, there's a pull back. You know, um, so it's a battle between life and death, and Jesus almost pulled into the darkness by this power of death. You know. um, so it's an incredible, you know, retelling of this this image. It's not an easy process at all. You know. um, so I wanted to make a, a you know a print respondent to this. So it starts off with this this drawing, and the drawing is is actually the, the one on the right and. I wanted the heads to match, so there's, so there's been equal balance between life and death. Um, so I drew this this kind of um, grid lines out first, uh, and I put a diagonal across. And this is where the hands lock, but and in the annotation of the side, I've, you know, I've, I've said actually that's that's too low down because I want it bang in the middle. I want it to be an equal balance. Yeah. Um, so the annotation is is evaluative. Yeah. I had this, uh, you know, in, in the film we we see Willem Dafoe look to heaven to ask for help, yeah. um, and um, but the, the look to heaven, you know, wasn't working for me in, in terms of this image because uh, it just looks like he's looking away from you know from the the, the person he's he's helping. So and you know, it didn't really work for the the, the kind of drama of the image. Yeah. Uh, and I had this idea down here that the Lazarus would be so shocked by coming back to his eyes so wide open, and he's. Um, so I made the second drawing um, on the opposite page um, and adapted it a little bit. So in, in the background we can see Martha and Mary transposed across from the original and that's um, just just really free doodling, but, which doesn't normally work when you're trying to make a figure, but you know, sometimes you're lucky. Uh, um, so you know, sometimes we find out by drawing, actually not just by thinking. You know, so, um, so and I had this idea of, of Lazarus being dazzled by the by the sun behind his head as, as his halo, um, and he's being pulled out of the darkness into the light. So um, I wanted his eyes scrunched shut, uh, um, but even that, you know, what wasn't kind of working for me. You know, so I'm looking for a new way to represent the the faces of the two protagonists in you know in this drama. Um, so I, I thought I'm going to go back to what I was doing at kind of at the start of this, which is really why it's a cycle. Yeah. You know. Uh, I've I've also got this great great app, a free photo app, uh, where you get forty five free photos a month. So, um, so I print off images, stick them in, uh, you know, and uh, this is the hands grasped. You know, this is um, wanted that you know that this image in. Uh, it's actually called a you know, Viking handshake or a gladiator handshake, um, uh, and this is um, uh, David Duchovny from the X Files being dazzled by uh, by car headlights. So yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think. Well, how how does the body respond to bright light? Yeah, so, um, so just sticking these things in as you know, as, as ideas and as as um, as mood board almost. Yeah. Um, a useful thing to do in in sketchbook is is uh, you know not just looking at artists and experiments and play, um, but actually annotation. You know, so uh, we write the the things down that we're doing, almost like a recipe. You know. um, so you know, for, for here, for instance, I'm, I'm saying you know, if the sun is behind Jesus' head, his face will be silhouetted, but it, it would lose some of the drama. So I, I need to compromise on that. You know, so kind of finding out and, and designing it as I go along. You know. um, no idea springs fully formed. You know, which is the the point of the design cycle. You know. So an annotation and evaluation, you know, really useful uh, as notes to your future self. So. You might think when you have this amazing idea that you know, well, well I'll always remember that, but um, you won't. You know, it's, it's actually it's like trying to remember a dream. It doesn't it doesn't work like that. You know, a couple of days later you'll you'll think how on earth did I do that, and it, you know, you won't remember it. So if you write it down in the book, it sets those triggers in place. You know. um, so going back to the start of this process, this is uh, these are the Loomis heads. You know, so this is the original Greek sculpture. Um, this is the the drawn response using the Loomis grid and some half tone inks, uh, and I like the the downwards gaze, which is this kind of soft, compassionate. Um, uh, there's this wonderful, you know, kind of idea in in scripture. Jesus is so upset that Lazarus has died that he he, he weeps. You know? um, so you know, so I thought I'll 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 put a, a tear in it, you know, just as, as an indicator of that. Um, and there's a description that I think it's Saint Paul that you know later on who who indicates that, that men at the time did wear their hair shorter. You know, so the traditional image of Jesus, may, you know, may not be accurate, but um, but the hair at the sides of his head, being that he was a rabbi, wouldn't have been cut to with the ringlets. So. And um, 
so it's a process, you know, we go from, from source material development and explanation towards, you know, kind of towards a more finished idea. Yeah. Uh, and I did the same with it with the, you know, the, the, the image that I was liked because it was looking up. So I thought, okay, so that's going to be one of the, you, know, the, you, know, you can see even under the grave clothes and the bandages that this is, this Lazarus is, is rooted in this original image. And it, it kind of is a process that goes along. Okay. So there we go. That's the uh, the PowerPoint. I'm sorry I didn't record that time because there's some interesting comments actually. Um, but yeah, I hope that, that it makes sense at, the, at this point, and um, we'll be doing a lot more uh, on this in terms of the design cycle and development, and how to generate ideas. And there's all kinds of games. You know, if, if you follow this over the next couple of weeks, it'll be uh, a way of increasing confidence and in generating ideas. Okay.